I hope everyone's having a great morning. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. In my calculus textbook, I have a specific end of chapter question which I've written out over here. It's to do with the hyperbolic functions. We have a, sp a specific equation here for the velocity, the velocity of an ocean wave in deep water. Gravity times the wavelength of that wave divided by 2 pi multiplied by hyperbolic tangent and then you have a 2 pi d over l where d here represents the depth of that wave with regards to the ocean floor. All of this is under the square root. The question is this, you have to show why this velocity equation is equal to simply just that for a wave in deep water. In essence what you are seeing in the question is this thing has been pushed out because it has no effect for an ocean wave in deep water. If you're looking at a specific wave and you're looking at it from right here, going from here down here, we're looking here at our depth, the D value, the depth to the ocean floor right there. And then we have a specific value here L, which is your wavelength of that wave from one point to the next point. In deep water, the equation, as you see over there for the velocity of that wave can very well simplify to that. And the question is why? If you think about this part right here, the hyperbolic tangent component, we have a specific ratio in there. We have this hyperbolic tan and then we have a two pi d over l. If you look right here at this d over l, it represents a certain ratio. It's the ratio of the depth divided by the wavelength. You know, in deep water, you could have a depth which is hundreds to thousands of feet, whereas the wavelength may, may be just several meters or it could be larger than that. But either way, the ratio is such that you have a very large number in terms of the depth divided by a relatively smaller number and when you look at this ratio this d or l ends up becoming in terms of a ratio a large number and then when you do the hyperbolic tangent of that large number multiplied by two pi you know exactly what happens you basically arrive at a horizontal asymptote of that hyperbolic function looking specifically right over here at this large number representing this ratio let's run a value here on our calculator we've put the calculator here on the radian mode i'm taking two i'm multiplying by pi and that's right there my two pi right over here and then i'm arbitrarily picking a value here for my ratio of 10. i'll multiply this by 10 i'll do the hyperbolic tangent and i get a value here of one what i'm seeing over here is for these very large or relatively large ratio values I'm getting a hyperbolic tangent value here of equal to 1 and you're essentially seeing a times 1 over there but 1 is meaningless in that sense. So for waves in deep water that ratio is relatively large in terms of the hyperbolic tangent it always equals a 1 hence this equation can be just viewed as just this with regards to the velocity of that wave. Remember it doesn't even have to be a very large ratio you could have a ratio equaling just a 1 a depth dimension equal to the wavelength dimension and see how that plays out. Again, put the calculator on the radian mode. You have a ratio value of 1. You multiply that by 2. You multiply that by pi. That's my 2 pi. You're doing hyperbolic tangent and you get a 0.999, a value very close to 1. So the ratio can be relatively small and you're still having a 1 in terms of the output of that hyperbolic tangent. In essence, this entire expression over here can be viewed as a limit. Limit as x this is my x-axis value is approaching a certain right over here 2 pi d over l your function which is your hyperbolic tangent will almost always equal to a 1 why is that the case you have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 1 you have a, another one here at y equals minus 1 when you graph it out you have something which looks like this but because we're looking here at a real life phenomenon including dimensions and velocity the velocity of a wave traveling in a single direction in terms of the inputs, in terms of the outputs, you can eliminate all of these negative values because you'll only be looking at positive x-axis, positive y values, and this is what your graph is. It doesn't take much here with regards to the x-axis values for you to come over here and arrive at a limit equal to one, and that's exactly what's going on. This ratio is so easy in terms of the hyperbolic tangent that you arrive at the horizontal asymptote very early on, and everything here becomes a one. So essentially for a velocity of an ocean wave in relatively deep water or even in deep water, all of this is basically a times one over here and the equation just boils down to that and that right there answers your question. Again, it has to do with this limit and the function approaching one very early on and your equation is very much simplified to that and that's all I wanted to present for you in this video. I'll give the appropriate credit in the video tag for this specific question, where it came from, the page number, the question number. It was not solved at the end of the book, Solutions, and I've solved it here for you. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.